Hello everyone, this is Helen H and welcome to my channel, Moss Cottage. Today I have a little project for you and this is a trash to treasures kind of project. It's not new to me, I have done it before and I will link my blog post below where I originally did this. Um, what it is using is oh, little boxes, little boxes that you would throw in the trash like this is a scotch tape box, uh, this is a pH test paper box, and this is from a little pack of playing cards, like a tiny little box. So it's recycling these little boxes. So, um, you know, we save all kinds of packaging to do to upcycle, and um, th this is something you can add to your list because this is what I made, and this is from the blog post that I put below. It's a little canvas. I made it into a little canvas. This box was actually one of those little boxes that raisins come in. And uh, the blog post title is called Raisin Art. Um, but isn't this cute? I love this. This is from a repro of a Dick and Jane book. Um, and that's Jane right there. But anyway, so I thought that I would show you um, some of the ones that I've been making. Uh, I've, I've got, had a whole bunch of boxes from my Yozo Craft uh, order that I recently did and other subsequent, subsequent ones. I've been saving them. But um, I made this one here. And that says Beloved. Then I made this little one here with the little owl. It says Free. This little bird one here that says soar. We've got this little doll, uh, doll head. That's from a doll book, cut out of um, a doll book I hauled once, and it says brave. Then we've got these flowers here that say believe, and I'm not sure if my camera can pick it up or not, but I stickled the leaves and the little blue like corn flowers. And then I made this one that says grateful and it's a little bee and again I stickled the bee's wings not sure I can't tell in my monitor usually my camera is pretty good and it will pick these things up but I cannot see it in my monitor so that's what uh, why I'm questioning then I made this little one that said inspire and this little girl here she's from a uh, vintage child's uh, pattern envelope you know the, the pattern came in it's got three little buttons there and then I made this one here, again, from my doll book. This is a vintage Barbie, and it says blessed. And this Barbie was a, I think, a flight attendant Barbie. And I just put a little stickles in the top here where her, uh, the little badge to her uniform was. Now, these are all mixed media type. I, I will show you how I made them. Um, but if you know anything about mixed media, it's basically paint, papers, uh, inks, uh, images, whatever, all put together however you want. And then the last thing I did was like add the elements like the stickles and the, the um, sentiments. So what I did was I started out, this is another one of these little sticker boxes like this from Yozo Craft that the little stickers come in. Like I said, you can save any kind of boxes, even, I didn't use them for this, but, um, ugh, one second, even these little boxes from the um, washi tape from Dollar Tree, um, because they're pretty squishy, but what, what I did was I used some foam, some packing foam, and I filled the box with the packing foam just to stabilize it a little bit um, so that it wouldn't get smushed down when I did all the the thing on it you could put layers of cardboard in there uh, paper tissue paper cotton whatever you want but just to give the center a little more stability and then what I did was I covered the whole thing hang on one second of course I'm not organized here hang on one second I covered 
the whole box after I filled it with just regular masking tape. And I went one way first, like a strip going around this way, a strip going around this way. Then I turned it and went this way. And that secures the box together so that it's not going to um, gap or, you know, one end's not going to pop out or something. So it's basically stuff, a stuffed little box that's covered with with plain old cheap masking tape. If you're going to use dark paints on it, you could probably even use painter's tape or or scotch tape or something, but scotch tape probably won't hold the paint very well. This this papery tape, it, it holds paint really well. So then um, what I did was I covered the whole thing, front and back, with just gesso. And if you don't have gesso, you can just use white um, acrylic paint. And I just did that because I wasn't sure which colors, you know, I made so many, you know, I made all of these at one time and I wasn't sure, uh, I made all of these at one time and I wasn't sure which color I was going to go with on the underside. So I wanted, if I used yellow or a light color, I wanted to have it all prepared. So that's what I did there. Then the next thing I did was um, I I painted and this one you can see it's, it's we're going to finish this one together. I just painted some some paint on and this color this one I actually used some like brownie gray and cream colors and I just painted the whole backside, I mean the whole thing all the way around just very crudely three different colors uh on there. Then I stenciled some aqua little stencils. Now, if you're going to be doing small little boxes like this to make little canvases, um, I would suggest using a small stencil, you know, something that has a small pattern because if you use a large one, you're not going to really see a lot. I used some number, some small number and letter stencils on these. So then after I stenciled the aqua color on there, then I just layered on some, oops, <laughs> layered on some paper, just scraps from my trusty scrap pouch. And I just layered on a few little torn pieces here and there. And I did, don't forget the sides too. And I'll tell you why, uh, what I'm going to do with these actually when I'm done. So that's it. It was painted, stenciled, papered. And um, I attached the paper with, um, I used the collage, collage page. Um, so then, then what I'm going to do is add a little focal point and this one I'm going to be using this cute little doll. She's from a old work basket magazine. They came out I think in like the 60s and this was actually from an ad for doll clothes, uh, where you could get some doll clothes patterns. But I thought she was really cute and she's nice and small. So I'm going to attach her and what we're going to do is I'm going to attach her with a little collage page. Oops. Uh-oh, craft a lanch here. My poor husband's trying to sleep. He's not he hasn't been feeling well. And here I'm crashing around like who knows what and my collage page is all goopy. All right. You just need very little bit. Now, I went ahead like I said, I went ahead and did a whole bunch at one time. Um because um, I'm really not prepared here because um, I had all those boxes and I, I just felt like playing one day. And this is a cute little project and I said I will tell you what I'm going to do with them. Um, this one that I made from the, from the uh, raisin box actually sits up on my desk and I can see it. And I look at it a lot and I love, I love to look at that one. So I'm just putting some collage page on the back of my little image here. This is this little girl. It could be whatever you want. You saw that I had people, butterflies, bees, whatever. Whatever you want your little image to be, you figure out where you want it. Um, to save time, I actually figured out where I wanted uh, her to be. And then, then I did cover her again with collage page um, like this. Okay. All right. That's fine. So she's on there like that. Okay. Now this one I'm not doing as much uh, to it as I did the other one because um, for time, you know, for time's sake, I don't want to keep you um, 
I am so unprepared for this video. I don't know why I even sat down to do this video. Um, let me just plug in my heat tool so I can dry her real quick. Talk among yourselves. Okay. I don't like to leave my things plugged in. Um, I have a friend who used used to do a lot of crafting and she, um, I need to pull you out a little bit. There we go. And she used one of those super hot um, glue guns, like the really super hot, like industrial sized glue guns. And she would leave that on sometimes by accident, like overnight and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so surprised she hasn't burned her house down by now. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I'm just going to dry her real quick so we can go to the next step. If you're doing a whole bunch of these, you probably don't have to dry them in between because you'll be working on the next one. I did these all in um, step by step. I did all of them. Yes, she's, she's dry enough. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to futz around over here. I am so sorry. <laughs> this is like the worst video ever. What I'm going to do is I use my Faber-Castell big, uh, big brush pit pens to go around to um, go around the images and it kind of just it it blends them in with the background so it just doesn't look like she's stuck on there um, my brown one I trashed it <laughs> because my impatience and I trashed it pretty early on after I bought the set you guys make sure this is dry before you use your pit pens on them. I did not and I ruined that one um, pretty early on. So I'm just going to use the gray with her and because I have the, the um, decoupage medium underneath her I can just kind of blend this. You, you have a few seconds with the India ink that's in these to blend blend it out a little bit so that she will fit, she won't look like she's just stuck on here but then also you won't have a solid line just outlining her cartoonishly. Is that a word? Well, it is now. So I'm just using this to go around and be careful when you go around faces and stuff that you don't accidentally brush the ink into their face or something because then you're going to have like a dirty face girl. Okay, so that's all I did was blend her in a little bit using my pit pen. And that's all we needed that for, so I'm going to put those away. Okay, so the next thing that I did was I took my Uniball, which of course I don't have my desk, but like I said, worst video ever. Talk among yourselves again. I had actually taken it over to my other desk because that's where I do my faith journaling, and I use it for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scribble on this a little bit. I'm going to make, um, I think I'm going to just make some scribbly lines around this. And I'm just going to do that and this. I'm not going to do them over her dress. I'm just going to do them kind of behind, make it look like she's in the front. And I'm just making a very crude line like that around, framing it, kind of framing it, and now I'm going to do it again and make a second line. And you don't want to draw on their faces or their hands or anything like that, so just skip that part if you get to that point where you have to color over your image or draw over your image. All right, Just very crude, no right, no wrong. Okay, so now she's framed out a little bit like this. Then what I'm going to do is just add some random marks, and I like to make like these little hash mark things. It looks like um, kind of like little crosses, and I'm just going to put them randomly, okay, like that, just a little doodling. Then what I'm going to do is get my folder that has my some of my bigger sticker packs in it and we're going to use a sentiment on her and I already picked one out like I said to uh, speed things up a little bit. This is a Tim Holtz chat, tiny chat, or is this big, I think this is big chat and this one says happy 
and you're just going to figure out where you want it and I want it right there but um, I don't trust these stickers when I'm attaching them to um, almost anything I don't trust them I like to put a little glue on them now on this because I'm putting it on something that I've decoupaged and it has kind of a slick surface I'm using the uh, Fabrifix Fabrifix but if you're just gluing it onto a piece of paper you can use um, your regular PVA glue or even a glue stick but I'm just going to put that and see I cut, cut, covered up some of the hash marks I made down there those little cross marks but it doesn't matter okay so now it looks like this and then the last step I'm going to do I lied about that pit pen I do need it again my gray pit pen I'm just going to go around the word happy to kind of blend it in also so it doesn't look like it's just floating on the surface and it kind of gives it a vintagey kind of grungy look like that there you go like that now I could add uh, sequins, I could put some, um, like I did with some of the others, I could put stickles, sequins, little buttons, whatever. Um, I just don't want to make this a terribly long video. Um, now, so to me that one's pretty much done. I might add a little flower or something later, I don't know. But what I'm going to do with these, now this one's nice and thick, the box was thick. So it will stand up by itself. It's Like I said, it stands up here on my desk. And this one will stand up by itself because it's a thicker box. Okay, so that can just like be a little decorative canvas on its own. These small ones are too small to stand by themselves. So what I'm thinking of doing with these is attaching this type of magnet. These are um, the disc magnets, and if you want, to, I want to make these all into little magnets. I think they'll be really cute. I don't have any more of these disc magnets right now, so I can't uh, attach them and show you them finished. Um, I need to go to Walmart and get some more of the disc, disc magnets. These are really super light, so you don't need the, the expensive ceramic magnets unless you want to use it to hold stuff up on your fridge like pictures or shopping lists or something if it's going to be holding something up on the metal sur surface like your fridge then you probably want to invest and in, get a ceramic magnet because they are super super powerful but the regular cheap disc magnets, I'm just going to use these as little decorative magnets. And I'll probably just even put these in little happy mails or something. Um, and so I'm just going to put regular little disc magnets on there. Now, because I'm not prepared, I'm, I've got to leave my desk one more time for the worst video ever. Hang on one second. Oh, goodness, hang on, hang on. Okay, because this is a tip, and I, I want to give you good tips. Okay, Oops. this is magnetic tape, and I have a couple rolls of these. I think I picked them up maybe at a um, thrift shop or something. I don't like this stuff at all, and the reason I don't like it, it is super hard to get it flat. Now, if you want to put up the good fight and put some magnetic tape on the back, uh, or you have a way that you know to straighten it up so that, because even when you use E6000 on the back, it will still pop up. It is, it is, once it's wound like this, it's very hard to get it flat. That's why I prefer to use the little disc magnets. They're so much easier. If you all know a way to get this stuff to flatten out, uh, then, I'd love to know. Leave it in the comments because I have a bunch of it. Like I said, I picked it up and now I find I can really not even use it. So um, the disc magnets are just so much easier to use. So I hope you like that little project and I hope you give it a try. Save some of those little boxes. Make some pretty little magnets out of it. How cute would these be on your fridge? 
my fridge has some of my artwork on it, so some of these might actually go on my fridge. But I also have a little hack for you that has nothing to do with magnets. It has to do with YouTube videos, and I'm just going to move that out of the way. This is just one of these binders from Dollar Tree. They had the they they get these they put these out like at the uh, back to school, which should be shortly, I think. But what I did was I have some pages from this is like an old ledger. Well, actually, it's not even that old, but just one of these columned ledgers here. And what I did was. I wrote the name, I'm going to see if I can't show you, it's kind of big here, let me move my coffee cup out of the way so I don't spill it. The way this video is going, that's what's going to happen. I vote, wrote the names of videos uh, that I subscribe to that I watch regularly, uh, or that I want to watch regularly, and I've written them in these columns here. Now these, these are removable, okay, I wrote them on the piece of paper like on this part of the piece of paper, then I cut that one strip out and I just have it paper clipped to an, over another sheet. The reason I did that was once I filled up March, April, May, June, July, I can just unclip this, put it on a clean page and then do August, September, October, November, December. I can, I can keep these without writing the name over and over again every six months, writing every... Um, YouTube channel that I watch uh, regularly, you know, I don't want to write all those names again. Here's the thing, I also have uh, one haul, I hauled that uh, that correction liquid that you can get at Dollar Tree, the, the white out, and I've whited out some of the channels that I no longer watch. Um, the reason I keep this journal isn't so that I you know, so much that I, I, I don't know. The reason I keep it is I want to make sure I'm checking in at least one video a month with all of these people. And if I find I'm not enjoying the videos, then I will, then I will wipe that one out and I won't watch it anymore. The reason I started to do this was when I started this YouTube channel, I already had a separate YouTube channel under the name Helen H and all of my my subscriptions were under that name. So I had to go through all of those because I wanted to bring them over to Moss Cottage and use that as my sole YouTube channel, not having the two channels, one with all my subscriptions and then one with all my videos. I wanted them together all on Moss Cottage. Um, when I was doing that and I was making this list, I went back and watched some videos. I find I watch the same people over and over and over and over again, which isn't a bad thing. I have some good friends who on YouTube that I watch all their videos. That's fine. But I had missed some of the ones that I had subscribed to. I went back and watched a video or two of theirs and was totally inspired. Um, one of those people was Christina Betts. Um, she was on my list, but because I hadn't been watching her, YouTube hadn't been putting her over in front of me over and over again. And she's the one who inspired me with this this pouch project, which I love. So guys, look through your subscription list and, and make sure that every once in a while you're checking in with those people you've subscribed to because originally you liked their ideas. If you go back and you find, well, you know, I'm looking at their videos and I'm not that into them anymore, unsubscribe from them um, and, and clear out your subscriptions. And this is the way I'm keeping track of that. When I find um, some of these actually I got rid of because of the content of what was in there, maybe the language wasn't what I really wanted to hear anymore, anything like that, or you know, just whatever. Some people I just decided I, I'm not going to be subscribing to them anymore. I don't want you to miss out on some of the really good, good videos that, that are out there that, you know, you subscribe to those people and they're still making good stuff, but we're watching the same people over and over and over again. So anyway, that was my little hack. Um, this is my little project. I hope you try it. Take, take some little boxes, and like I said, it doesn't matter what they are. You're not going to see them, um, but they can make, make either the little canvases that can sit up and decorate, or if they're small enough and light enough, they can make the little magnets. 
And that was my little uh, project for you today. Give it a try. I hope you liked, uh, liked it. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell button so you get notifications when I make more videos. And thank you so much for subscribing. I've got a bunch of new subscribers. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. I hope that I'll be able to provide you with some really cute projects. I do a lot of journaling, but I do other things as well. Uh, it's not all journaling. And I will show you hacks, you know, about things that I find are helpful to me. Just maintaining the craft room or, or you know, YouTube or whatever. So, guys, have a really blessed rest of your day. And thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.